for me, I, I had heard about, I actually got invited to a Canucks game and it was, uh, when we were in the suite and I actually just saw, I, uh, saw like just the headlines about it. And I kind of just, I did it more of a post cause recently I've been out in the BC community and a lot of people are just vocal about, well, why do you do so much? So that was more what it came about from. It just happened. This is also the time, like all this NHL stuff is kind of circulating as well. But yeah, that's, uh, that's that's how it came about. <laughs> right, but this is this is he reached out to us ten days ago, and yeah. I said I'm going yeah. away. I'm not hosting these shows. Can you wait until I get back to come on? Because was there an incident in your past that you wanted to talk about? That was kind of the yeah. sense that I got from your post. Yeah, yeah. So in my so yeah in the in what was that my red shirt junior year at Virginia, uh, we had just. We had just come off beating Penn State, but, uh, you know, every game you can get better. And I remember, like, for me, a Pennsylvania kid, that had been a big game. That was kind of one of the few games while I was at Virginia that actually got a lot of playing time. And I simply asked to use hand ropes. And any D lineman knows the hand ropes keep your hands in so you strike the breastplate. Well, my coach decided his response to that was he only needed the hand ropes to hang me and the other black defensive lineman from the shed that was behind them. And so that kind of started the wind down of me leaving Virginia and then going to Miami. But it just things circulated. Uh, I became, uh, it was said I was trying to divide the team by just saying he shouldn't be allowed to say this to us. I had a, a at people who know about the University of Virginia, there's honor. There's an honor council. When I was trying to transfer to Miami, they, I had a fake honor case brought up on me. Like th- things just snowballed for me, just being vocal on, "Hey, a coach just said he was going to hang me, and you guys aren't doing anything about it." So that was kind of the post I said. And then also it was a big thing. Like a big thing when I do go to the community is I talk to the kids and I tell them they can because. A big thing during that period was every coach throughout the Virginia staff told me to give up football, told me not to play anymore. So just two years removed from all that, and that was a big the big part of the post. I was holding the NFC Championship trophy on the way to a Super Bowl with the Seahawks. So that was the bit nuts and bolts of the post. It tied into a lot of the NHL stuff that's going on right now. But that was the – Big, that's the big gist of my post there. Can I just ask you how you persevered and you didn't quit? Because most would have, uh, I would think. I think a lot of it just, I don't know, uh, that embar- that that like that spring when they were like, uh, we reported, we report the first day for my, it would have been my senior year of spring ball. And they, I show up and they say, oh, uh, I was told you're not still on the team to then the next, this is all in one week to then the next day I talked to the head coach and basically I'm on a probationary period now on the team to then by the third day, I'm in the strength coach's office and he's saying, why are you even here? You're not good enough to play. And from that, like, I'm not good enough to play. And I've known for, cause that's the other thing. Like they, my dad would come to practices and they had to go so far as to, shut down practices so my dad couldn't come watch i knew i could play my dad's not one of those dads that will just tell you oh you can play something he would he would tell me days i sucked he would say you didn't make no plays in that practice you can't go nowhere playing like that so it would so i knew i could play it was just a matter of i had to buckle down take the 19 credits leaving the transfer we already knew that the teacher was lying and two virginia staff people were lying the honor council people told Miami and then the Miami coaches had had recruited me as a junior in high school. So they had the faith in me and I knew it was Miami. So if I went and played, I'd have a shot. So, so good people saved you and belief in yourself basically. Yeah. 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 Coach Al Golden, my parents and coach uh, D'Onofrio. I mean, I had known those guys, Coach Golden and D'Onofrio had reached out to me pretty much as a sophomore in high school telling me to come play at Temple at the time. So, 
I had a good rapport with them since the beginning, so it was an easy. Have choice. you told Have you told this story to anybody since, or is this the first? Uh, this is probably the first time. I mean, other than when I first transferred uh, to Miami, we're sitting in. I'm sitting in Coach Golden's office, and he said to me, "He's like, because you have to get a final. The once I'm there, all the papers go through. You got to get a final sign off from your your old head coach." And it's the day, it's like two days in the training camp. Coach London hasn't signed off. And so I straight, I told Coach Golden the whole story. And I think that's pretty much the last time I told this story. I told Coach Golden the whole story in his office. And then within 30 minutes, he was like, okay. And then whatever he said to Coach London about him knowing everything that went on, within 30 minutes, that paper was signed and I was on the field practicing. So that's, I think that's probably the last time since now I even told the story because, you know, you still, I still had to worry. I was, I still had it in the back of my head the whole time. Like I'm in the NFL, CFL, football world small, especially when you get to pro football. So, and you know, people talk because like for me, like my first NFL sack as a D lineman came against Evan Marcus, the same coach who told me I wasn't going to. I wasn't even going to be there. He was the head strength coach of the Vikings. So, you know, those people still keep going in the world. I, I, and, like, you know, the world comes full circle. That's my first sack. He has to watch it. But still, he's in that world. And that voice is still a voice that somebody's going to listen to. So you got to watch 